Welcome back to another episode of Life Group Leaders Lounge. I'm here as always with my fantastic co-hosts, Braden and Raquel. What's up, guys? How you doing? Good. Great. Good, good. Yeah. All right. So today's topic, we want to jump into answering the tough questions, answering the stumpers. That's what I call it, the stumpers. The stumpers. I just made that up, the stumpers. <laughs> I, it doesn't make any sense, but it uh-uh. makes sense to me. So explain so, that to us. Yeah, so... At some point in in your leadership as a life group leader, you are going to run into a really hard question that's asked to you on the spot, mm-hmm. and you and everybody's going to turn and look at you, and they're going to want to know what the answer is. And so, what do you do in those moments, right? Because there's there's hard biblical questions people mm-hmm. could ask you mm-hmm. that you may not know the answer to. You may, um, or there could be really tough personal questions that people ask you that you recognize that maybe there's a lot more going on underneath the surface than mm-hmm. just the question that they're asking, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, Raquel, where do we start with this? Well, we start with the look of a deer in the headlights. <laughs> That's usually, <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm just kidding. Good practical tip. Try to not do that. But, um, yeah, that can kind of be your first um, instinct reaction in your heart is, you know, maybe I'm not equipped for this to answer this. But... I encourage you to start with the proper mindset. Now, yeah, good. always remembering as a life group leader that we don't know all the answers. None of us know all the answers. Yeah. But to remember that your job as a life group leader is the conduit to the Lord. And so keeping that mindset in your heart and knowing that you are good at that. You were called to do this and you're good at it. And then that will bring you the confidence to remember, I don't lean on my own understanding. Yeah, good. And so my job is to, is to, yeah, ask what is this person really needing? And, and again, it goes to, um, what we talked about on Sunday was servant leadership, right? To be a good leader, you have to be a good follower. So just as you follow Jesus, you're bringing everybody else along with you in your leadership. Yeah, that's, that's excellent. I do, I do, especially what you said where like none of us know all of the answers. Mm -hmm. So if you wait to become a life group leader, or maybe someone you're apprenticing is waiting to become a life group leader until they feel like they have all of the answers, they will never become a life group leader. Well, part of that is because knowledge is a moving target. We feel like, man, I don't know enough. But if you compare that to what you what you knew today versus five years ago, yeah, true. between your probably your biblical knowledge and your life experience, you know a lot more now. So you're able to serve people. And yeah. so don't yeah. allow the moving target of whatever knowing enough is detract you from your leadership influence. That's that's true. That's true. So why don't we talk about what are some things that we don't want to say in those moments? So I'll kick it off. So first of all, things you don't want to say is you don't want to just make up an answer that you don't know the answer to. That's fantastic. So if somebody asks you a question and you just blah, 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 yeah, yeah, Jesus, and then you throw something out that sounds smart, but hasn't, doesn't answer the question or worse is the wrong answer. (laughs) Um, I think what you do at that moment is you just uh, basically destroyed any credibility that you built forever. How long you've been leading this group? Yeah. Because now you put a question in someone's mind of, okay, uh, when I asked him a question at one time, he totally made something up mm-hmm. and he was wrong. So how can I trust him again in the future? Yeah. Right. So you don't want to do that. That's really unhelpful. Yeah. So right. definitely don't do that. And I'd say one more, I would want to just throw in there is another thing you don't want to answer is if someone asks you a really personal, difficult question, don't just slap a scripture on it and say like, oh, this should just answer all of your questions. Just, you know, one thing I see all the time is like, oh, someone is suffering. Don't just throw a, hey, you know what, brother, Romans 8, 28, right? The, you know, all things work together for good. So yeah, that should just answer all of your questions. So I, I just hope you listen to that scripture and, and okay, let's move on. You know, like we don't want to do that. So again, you that's self-serving. You would right. be answering that with either non-truth or slapping scripture on it because you're wanting to satisfy yeah. e- the ego or something. So remember that you're serving them and yeah. you might not know the answer that they need right. in that moment. Yes. Yeah. And, I, and I'll, I'm going to throw in one more thing that we didn't even talk about. I was just thinking about here is you also want to be careful that you don't just like dismiss the question or try to answer it really quickly without being thoughtful about it because you have an agenda you're trying to get to. So if someone may ask a question as a life group leader or as a life group that is totally outside of what you were thinking, but in that moment, 
um, it's really important for you to address that. And maybe the Spirit of God wants the whole group to be able to process that together. So for you to just rush in and dismiss it because it doesn't fit where you're trying to go, um, yeah, I think true. you're missing an opportunity right there for the Lord to, to kind of jump in and intercede yeah. in your group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, along with the tone of what you guys are saying, you can have the right answer, but say it in the wrong way. Yeah, true. And that's where you have to be pastoral. And as uh, you guys are shepherding your group, and so part of shepherding your group knows how to give that dose, that antidote of medication, if you will. If truth is like a bomb, you have to still apply it very um, yeah, tactfully. Good. Yeah. And so it, just then one more thing to consider when you're sharing truth is not just sharing truth, but how you share truth. Yeah, because it can feel yeah. like a hammer. Yeah. Right. But, at times. I, it, but, but to your point, most yeah. often, and this topic is on tough questions, there are many times that we're going to have, uh, you're going to have situations where you don't know the answer. And I think one of the best things to do at first, and I tell people all this the time, just say this phrase like, that's a good question. Yeah, good. I don't know. Let me get back to you. There's three pieces to this. Let's re- go through that. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. Affirm the validity of the question. Yeah. yeah. Like, so this is what we're, this is yeah. what we should be saying when we yes. get asked tough yeah. questions. Yeah. So. When you, when there's a tough question that you don't know how to respond to either pastorally or actually just don't know the answer, start with affirming the question because there's probably a it probably took confident courage for them to speak out yeah. and ask that question and yeah. say, you know what? Ah, hey, what do you guys think of that? that Let's honor that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a good question. There's probably so much history behind that yeah, question yeah. for them, mm-hmm. potentially. Mm-hmm. And so that's a good question. And you can say, I don't know. I think there's such a great leadership thing when you can tell people I'm still growing. And that's yeah. something I'm not sure yeah. on the spot yeah. on what I want to say. But yeah. then the third part of this, and this is so important to me, is let me get back to you. So it's that's a good question. I don't know. Let me get back to you. Let me get yeah, back good. to you puts the responsibility for you as a leader to keep growing and you can be resourceful. Come to us as your leaders, come to the pastors, research on your own, like be that leader who then will circle back to that good question and return to them whatever you can sufficiently. And it's okay if it's not everything you'd hope to get back to them. Yeah. 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 I, one question, one thing that I say too is, uh, even if I just need a moment to think and process, I'll say, hey, that's a great question. Like you said, that's mm-hmm. a really good question. Uh, does anyone in the group want to speak to that before yeah. I before yeah, I jump good. in? Yeah. Because oftentimes other people can affirm that and say, you know what? I've had that question yeah. too. Like, I'm glad you asked that. Or even mm-hmm. like, yeah, I, I had that question for a long time and I actually met with a pastor and, and here's something he shared with me and I felt like it really helped answer that question for me. That way you're pulling in the wisdom from the whole group and what you're doing is you're pulling in the wisdom that they've received from God that now you are sharing and multiplying for the mm-hmm. whole group too. So, and it also right. gives you a moment to think and process. Mm-hmm. So, and again, you're the con- conduit. Yeah, like absolutely. You're joining together everybody's knowledge of what yeah. they've learned on this question. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Now, there's another thing I think it's important here is uh, when someone asks, a, let's say, a biblical question, I think some people aren't always aware that there are a lot of things in scripture that have multiple views to them. Yeah, and true. so, here's the thing, guys mm-hmm. totally have a view. If you have a view on something that's being asked, Share it, be passionate about it and have a good reason for it. But honor other views that are there because let's say, for example, someone in your group might have a different view. And if you say there's no other view on that particular topic, you might be ostracizing them. Yeah. So at least be like, hey, that's a great question. Did you know there are three views on this? And yeah. You can just, and it, you don't have to be an expert on it. Anyway, you can just yeah. say, you know what? And I have great resources I could point you to. Yeah, excellent. But the yeah. point being, you're showcasing that there is a lot of things in scripture we are still discussing that we don't have certainty about. And that's okay to have those discussions about yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to think, do we have anything else we were going to share? I think we mentioned just having that, that mindset, as Raquel was saying, of just, I'm a conduit for the Lord in this moment. And, um, some people may be asking questions beyond just maybe the initial Mm -hmm. question that they're asking. There could be a lot deeper things. Mm -hmm. Raquel actually had a good, something I wanted to make sure you had a chance Mm -hmm. to touch on. I know something we've talked about before as a group and want to share with you guys is that there are sometimes, um, even though it might come across as a question that is analytical or a logical question, there's usually a deep emotion driving that question. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think Mm -hmm. is helpful to remember or to do when someone's question uh, may be more emotionally driven than how it sounds on the surface? And just to give an example for you guys thinking, it might be something like, why do you think God allowed this to happen? Yes. So I think your first knee jerk reaction, instinctually, we'd be thinking, how do I answer this question? Mm-hmm. And that's when you get like the deer in the headlights yeah. look. Yeah. But instead of that, cha- change that to why are they asking this question? Yes. And yeah, you're asking yourself good. and you're asking God and you're listening. Yeah. 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 That's good. And that will begin to, to guide 
your path a little bit. 100%. Yeah. And it shows care. I mean, so you're basically asking, yeah, that's so good. Go ahead, Brooks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, um, just acknowledging, you know, that's that's a really heavy question. That's a really, it sounds like you've been thinking about that for a while. Is that something that you've been processing for a while, you know? like yeah. Probe can, more. Yeah, can I ask what, like, like what made you want to ask that from what we were talking about today, yeah. you know? Um, or even can we meet? for coffee. Yeah. And that's an excellent question. Like, like, yeah. And I even, sometimes I say, uh, I've, I've been in that situation where I say, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I really, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I'm really sorry. It sounds like you had a lot of trauma and you've experienced a lot of pain. Like I'm really sorry that you've experienced that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I'd love to get coffee to talk to you about that afterwards or whatever. And touching on our previous podcast with Gordon, where you know, he's actively listening. He's listening to them and he's listening to God at the same time. Yeah. 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 yeah so just, that's, that's yeah. something, why don't we, why don't we tie this up here? Let's tie this whole mm-hmm, conversation mm-hmm. up and, and let's just say like the one, the one common theme throughout that we talked about today is just constantly being in prayer is that mm-hmm. we want to be in prayer in these moments when we're asked tough questions. Like, I think we want to go in prayer before you even go to your life group. Lord, help me be able to lead and guide today in this, in this, uh, life group, help me to even be able to ask, answer questions that maybe I don't know how they don't mm-hmm. know how to answer or have the answer mm-hmm. on the spot. Um, but then even in those moments being willing to, while you hear that question, immediately go to the Lord in prayer with it. Lord, you know, what's going on in this person's life. And mm-hmm. I don't know how to answer this question and give me your wisdom to be able to answer it. Um, like I can share an example of this. Like, um, I was in a life group uh, a couple of years ago and a very sweet man who's been a Christian for a long time, uh, we were reading in First John where it talks about um, if, you, if you hate your brother, you hate your sister, um, how can you, I think it's First John 4, how can you say that the love of God abides in you? And he said, I want you to know, like, uh, I, I've hated my dad my whole life. And um, when I became a Christian, um, when I was in my 20s, I, I still, I still feel like I really hated him until really, until he was really older in his life when I eventually forgave him. And so he said in the group, um, he said in the group, can you, um, how would I answer? And he said, what do you say? He said, how, how, how can I call myself a Christian? Yeah, if that's I, what he said. Yeah. yeah. He said, how can I call myself a Christian? Um, if I hated my dad for so long. Mm-hmm. And so I remember that moment praying like, oh gosh, that's a really hard question. Um, and also it's a very, it's a, it's a very personal question because mm-hmm. this is something he's been struggling with for a long time. And so in that moment I prayed cause I didn't know what to say. I just prayed. And as I was praying, I just, I just sensed in my heart, my, I, I had an answer. I just, I shared in the best answer I could. I just said, Hey, um, I don't doubt your Christianity. I just, I wonder if you experienced so much pain from your father that it took you you know, 40, 50 years for the Lord to finally soften your heart, to forgive him and to, mm-hmm. and to experience healing in that. Um, but that he was working the whole time, but that God the had Lord been working. Was, yeah. That yeah. he had been working that whole time. I mean, because that's a great example of how conviction is actually a friend in an example of the Holy spirit abiding in you. The Holy mm-hmm. spirit doesn't convict those he's not abiding in. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So we, we, so as a, as a life group leader, you may be faced with one of those questions yeah. at some point. And we hope that this, this episode, this podcast has been helpful and encouraging. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we just want to thank you again for joining us and, we look forward to another week, uh, another episode coming up next week. All right, God bless.